Ladies and gentlemen, we yet again have another problem with Buster. Okay, like this is just one of those problems that's just a result of having a highly modified car. This is why I did not want to go this route with this car. Now, even though this is where we've ended up, I wanted to avoid this because I get so tired of having to go through this, but seemingly all at the same time, I just can't stop myself. God, it's a sick world we live in, sick. Anyway, I'm gonna give you a little update. If you notice something, there's something a little different about Buster's engine bay. I don't know if you can tell right off the bat, but if you are a keen eye and you know what I've done to this car, you would realize that both catch cans, the one over here and the one over here, they're no longer there. I decided I want to see what happens if I remove those catch cans. And instead of having one catch can over here for this breather outlet on the valve cover go, that goes into charge pipe here before the turbo, the catch can over here, the good Mishimoto catch can that I've had on the car pretty much since new, that goes from the baffle on the side of the engine right here into the intake manifold. I thought removing them and then plumbing the baffle straight into this catch can or this uh, tank, baffled tank, would be beneficial. And well, yeah, it works perfectly fine. I mean, honestly, it's really probably the preferred method of alleviating the pressure inside the engine. Because having this port over here, in a sense, is kind of, um, you know, it's not needed. Because how the factory system worked is under idle when, you know, you're not in boost and the engine is under vacuum. Well, it's going to pull through this one right here. It's going to pull all those vapors and fumes from the engine, pull it right into the intake manifold and be able to burn again. And then when you're under boost, obviously, if this is pressurized, there's actually a check valve in the baffle. So when this becomes pressurized, obviously, it's not sucking in anything. But over here, that's what this size does, because over here under boost, the turbo, when the turbo is spinning, is pulling a vacuum, and then that is sucking all the vapor out of the top of the cover. The problem is, with that setup, and especially when you start pushing a lot of boost, even this car's factory boost setting of 22 PSI, I noticed it. I noticed what was happening. And this is the factory um, line that goes from back there, and then it goes and plugs right onto the charge pipe. What was happening is this whole inside of this line is coated with oil. It was basically sucking, you know, the oil through this line so hard. I mean, straight oil, not vapor, just straight oil. And then that was creating a problem where all that oil was coming through the line. It was going into here. Yeah, the turbo is coated with oil. The charge pipe is coated with oil. I'm sure there's probably some in the intercooler as well. Over here seems pretty dry because I think I took care of it before it got too, too bad. But I know it had made its way into the new engine because using my nice new endoscope and looking down in each of my cylinders, I see a lot of carbon deposits on those cylinders. So I know that oil vapor, oil deposits were making their way into the engine, which I think was also causing some detonation issues I was having and a few other you know, quirky issues. So I decided to run this line to this catch can. That's why I put this catch can over here because I thought, well, if oil is getting through to the turbo, maybe the catch can will do just that, catch that oil before it gets into the turbo, the inlet of the turbo. So having this on the car for X amount of miles seemed to, you know, work a little bit and then I realized that I'm still getting oil in the inlet of the turbo because I had cleaned all these lines out and I realized I'm still getting oil in there. I'm like, you got to be kidding me because that's when I found out that it's not really sucking in oil vapor, it's sucking in oil. So yeah, I don't know. How, I don't know why that is. So it's just a, uh, you know, it's just not a good design for an engine that you're you're pushing like I am this one. It's definitely not a good thing to have all that oil make its way into the induction system. Thanks, Ford. Uh, anyway, I'm decided to just, you know what, delete both catch cans, run it straight to this tank. And yeah, 
it's been working pretty good. Except there's an unfortunate side effect that has now created a whole nother issue um, with the drivability or uh, maybe not drivability, but livability with the vehicle because it drives fine. But having to live with this side effect is a bit annoying. Um, let me demonstrate. So did you happen to catch that? Did you see how much vapor, how much stuff is coming out of this? That's the problem. Because as you're driving normally, you know, obviously it's a street car, it's on the street, there's traffic. So when you're sitting in traffic, and mind you, that chooches a whole lot harder than what you saw. And I just hope it showed up good on camera. As much as that was coming out of there now, when the engine is fully warmed up, when it's like really hot outside and everything's warm, that smokes like a freight train. It is crazy how much stuff comes out of there. Obviously, one thing, it shows you how effective it is at alleviating all of that. But two, the side effect is it fills up the whole engine bay with hot gases or hot vapor, which I've noticed, one, it seems to heat things up a lot quicker, considering this is located right next to my intake manifold. Uh, two, the problem, the main issue I'm concerned about is that when you're sitting in traffic and it fills the whole engine bay up with vapor, well, that vapor ends up getting its way into the cabin of the car. So then you're sitting here in traffic and you're like starting to gas yourself out from those fumes, those vapors coming from that venting tank. And uh, well, that's not good. It's not enjoyable. It's not healthy to be breathing that stuff in. That stuff needs to be out of the inside of the car. Not to mention a day like this is not even, it's actually really nice out, surprisingly, temperature wise. Like if I wanted to cruise around with the windows down, it sucks because I get gassed out. So that's the problem with this kind of setup is that, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of just nasty smells. You're gonna expose yourself to stuff you probably shouldn't be breathing in. Here's my solution, hopefully. I'm going to reinstall the Mishimoto catch cam. Now I did change out um, one of the fittings. This is the normal fitting that comes on the catch cam. It's a, you know, a barbed fitting because it's just rubber hose with band clamps when you get it. I changed it out for the one of the AN fittings I had on the other catch can. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm gonna put it back where it was, right, right over here on the strut tower. You know, I'm gonna have the output the same. So the output's still gonna run to the manifold here, but instead of running the baffle straight to the catch can, I'm gonna tee it off and then I'm gonna run one side the T, one side of the T will go to this. This is just a hose I made out of some of the leftover stuff I had. And I have this 45 degree AN fitting, which is gonna go on the catch tank right here like that. This is gonna run down there where it will, you know, have a T fitting with the, um, yeah, this hose here, which is the one from the baffle. And then the other side of that T fitting will go to this hose. And then this hose, We'll go right on there like that to the Mishimoto catch can. Now I'm hoping, this is what I'm hoping, I don't know if it's going to work, but we're gonna find out. I'm hoping when the car is, you know, under vacuum, which is a lot of driving, when you're cruising, you're mainly in vacuum. When you're idling, you're in vacuum. So when you're sitting in traffic, it's pulling a vacuum. I'm hoping that the vacuum will be strong enough to suck those vapors through so they don't come out here, they end up getting sucked back into the engine. But when I go wide open throttle, builds a lot of boost, builds a lot of pressure, those vapors are gonna go out of here because of the path of least resistance and allowing the engine to vent really well. But when I'm idling, I'm not gonna get gassed out. Hopefully that works. I mean, it should, right? Theoretically, I don't see why it wouldn't, but we're about to find out. I gotta start undoing some of this work that I've done and uh, get these new lines put on here. So let me get to work in here. All right, this is uh, it's actually taking me a lot longer than I thought it would take to do this, but here we go. I mean, it's not my best work because there's some quirky things going on that I'm not super proud about, but 
If it fixes the problem for now without gassing me out, then uh, I'll be happy until I find a better solution. So uh, as you can see, the other line here runs down. There's a T-fitting back there coming from the baffle. The other line from the T-fittings right here comes up to the input of the catch can. And then of course the catch can runs out into the manifold just like it was. So now all that's done, hopefully when I start the car up, there won't be a ton of vapor. If a, if a little bit comes out, it's fine. That's how it was before because it was still a vent at the top. But now because there's a vacuum being drawn onto this where it wasn't before, uh, it should suck all that vapor into the engine when there's a vacuum. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, well, taking a look here, there's a little bit of vapor coming out still. I figured there would be, like I said, there was before when it was just venting out the top but that is a whole lot less. I can barely see it. It's a whole lot less than it was uh, before. Um, hopefully when the car is fully warmed up, it will be even more less. So it seems to be working how I figured. It isn't a drastic improvement since I do have a uh, vented catch can tank thing, but now I kind of have the benefits of, of, of both systems. Yeah, that's a whole lot less coming out of there. And hopefully, since there's a vacuum being drawn onto this, it will keep it from uh, getting overwhelming. And uh, that would be great. Oh, wow, okay, so, thankfully, that work was, well, as of now, seemed to be worth my time, hopefully. Yeah, I don't even smell it that much. So even if the vapor's coming out of there, the gases themselves seem to be being sucked into the, the car. I don't smell it like I did before. So that's a positive. Um, so yeah, best of both worlds with this revised uh, <laughs> breather setup. And um, hopefully everything will go well. It should vent the engine as needed. It shouldn't create any issues. And now I don't have to worry about it blowing or sucking rather oil into my turbo. So that whole side is deleted and this whole side is now good and if you're wondering how i uh, deleted that because there was a sensor right there in fact the connector is just kind of hanging out back here um it's pretty easy to do if you have tuning software like hp tuners that just throws a code for um your crankcase pressure you know it's like crankcase ventilation system leak detected or something like that you know nothing crazy and if there was anything wrong with it it doesn't affect the car in any way like it doesn't put the car in a different driving mode or affect the drivability it's just a warning like hey something may not be right with your ventilation system so in order to alleviate the check engine light that will come with having that sensor unplugged or having nothing going to the sensor like having the pipe disconnected uh, you can go in hp tuners and there's a whole section for like diagnostic codes and you can toggle which codes throw a check engine light throw a wrench light don't throw a light but throw a warning like you know a background code or not throw a code at all so obviously i let the car run without it seeing what codes it threw and then in hp tuners i went to those codes turned basically the warnings off like it doesn't tell me anything as far as the car is concerned there's no problem and flash that tune we're all good to go. That's all you have to do with stuff like that. So Buster should be good for now until something else comes along, which I'm sure won't be too long before that happens because that's just how it goes. But for now, that's good. I'm already sweaty. I didn't want to have to change my shirt, but I'm going to have to change my shirt. And yeah, with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here for the video. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next. Cars create a video.